Hello and welcome to my tarot and oracle table. As the title of this video suggests, I'm going to answer questions today using tarot cards. So before we actually get to the point where you follow the timestamps to your individual reading, I want to explain a little bit about how a question gets answered through the cards. So if you're new to tarot, tarot and oracle cards are tools used more for self-discovery and spiritual self-exploration than the hokey commercial idea that they predict the future. We are living lives of complete free will. And what that means is that Although there are spiritual energies that influence us, those influences can only guide. They can't actually compel. We can never be, for example, forced by our astrological occurrences to do specific things or be a specific way. Every single one of us, you, me, your neighbor, your kindergarten teacher, and your kindergarten teacher's friend, like all of us have complete free will. And for that reason, when we ask a question about something we want to know in the future, the answer that gets revealed, whether it's positive or negative, it only represents the future that we are moving into if we continue behaving the way we behave now, if we keep living the way we are living. So for example, if you are extremely driven, goal-oriented, like a get-or-done type person who decides you want to achieve something and then you don't rest until it is achieved, and you ask a question like, is my current business venture going to be successful? It's very likely that the answer is going to be yes, but that's not because the cards are showing you have this great spiritual windfall that you're about to happen upon. It's the cards confirming for you that you are doing what needs to be done to manifest the future outcome you desire. However, if you're a lazy, procrastinating couch potato who fantasizes about having wealth and all kinds of amazing success, but your life philosophy is always, eh, I'll do it tomorrow. If you ask that same question about whether or not you're going to have success, it's likely the cards are going to say no. Now, either way, whether you are the goal-oriented, driven, successful, ambitious workaholic or the couch potato, you have free will, which means you will not be defined forever by the way you have been living up until this moment in time. So if your past was one way and your present is one way, your future is still up to you. A goal-driven person who never rests, who works, 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 might one day wake up and realize, well, shit, I've got a nice house. I've got a successful business. I've got savings in the bank, but I'm not happy. I haven't done anything I enjoy doing in a long time. All I do is work. I have no quality time with my family or with my friends or even with myself. That person might suddenly decide to take a hiatus, a, a temporary break from work. And suddenly then their future changes because they're no longer on the same trajectory. And the same way, a person who till now has been a little lazy, a little procrastinating, a little put it off till tomorrow energy might have a wake up call where suddenly they realize, well, sure, I do what feels good in the moment, but I'm filled with dread that what if one day in the future, I'm no longer able to do what's good because I haven't set aside enough to know that my needs are covered 
if one day I'm not able to skate by on the bare minimum anymore. And suddenly that person realizes they need to put in a little bit more effort into materializing what they want because they may not always have the opportunity that they have right now to do it. And suddenly that person who in previous experience was lazy and would procrastinate, suddenly that person is working towards their goals and their future changes. And so what I'm saying is when we ask the cards a question, the answer that is revealed offers you the choice. If it's the future you want, like if you get the answer you want from the cards, what it's telling you is keep doing what you're doing, you're good. And if it gives you an answer that you don't want to hear, that's difficult to hear, that shows the future has some obstacles, what it's giving you the opportunity to do is reflect on your priorities, your decisions, and your actions. Like, how are you leading yourself into a future that you yourself don't necessarily desire? And then you can change it. So whatever comes forward has the answer to your question through the tarot cards. That answer exists to offer you the opportunity to either keep at it so that the answer comes to pass or change gears so that the answer doesn't come to pass. In other words, don't ever feel limited by what comes up in the reading. I'll never forget the very first time I answered a question through the tarot cards that I didn't want to answer. I used the Osho Zen Tarot, which is the deck you see right here. I was at the Tarot Room in Vancouver where I was reading professionally. If you're curious about my whole story with tarot, I'm planning a video sometime in this next week where I will draw and tell you all about my time and how I got into it and you know, what the cards represent and, you know, how, how this all happened, how I became a reader. But for now, I just want to share this one little anecdote. So I was at the tarot room and the owner of the entire complex that that room was located in popped into the, into the space. And he was, you know, very, very successful businessman. Like obviously he owned over two blocks worth of property on Granville Island in Vancouver, which is like prime real estate, super affluent, very, very successful. He would sometimes come in to chat with me because he found out that I was into mystical things and spiritual things. And as it turns out, as nobody is a one-dimensional caricature of themselves, despite his business success, he had a secret fascination with mysticism. And so he had traveled to Mount Kailash and was happy to share with me a photo album filled with photos that his son had taken of their Kailash journey, the temples they had seen, the different holy men they had encountered in the Himalayas. And anyway, in one of our little chats, he asked me if I could read for him a prediction of when he would die. And I said, no fucking way. Like, I'm not going to open that can of worms. Like these cards, just like I told you at the beginning of this video, like the cards are here for spiritual self-discovery. We cannot predict the future, but this man was persistent. Like he insisted that I answer the question. He insisted. And I told him, I can't stand by the results of what the cards show. Like they might play with us and refuse to answer. Like it might say you're going to die when you're 10. And right now you're in your early 70s. So that means move on to the next question. Like this cannot be answered through the tarot cards. So he was, he was up for it. He said, like, let's do this. Like, I, I want you to tell me 
a number. And so I told him, okay, like this deck is divided into suits. So one kind of suit represents a day, one a week, one a month, one a year. And then it, they have numbers on them. So the numbers will represent the, the specific. Like if, if we get the suit of days and the number four, then it's like four days and, and then we'll keep going until we get a number of years. And I said, if immediately the card drawn is a decade and the number is, for example, like seven or eight or nine, then that means in your seventh decade, so 70 something, 80 something, 90 something. Like I was just kind of making it up on the spot thinking what other way could cards predict something like this? And as it turned out, we played this little game and it showed that he would live to be in his late 80s. And I was a little, like I felt badly that holy shit, like that's only around 15 years from now. But he teared up and said, thank you, thank you, thank you. You just added over a decade to my life. And I asked him what he meant by that. And he told me that he and his wife had gone on a trip once, like some fancy Caribbean cruise. And at one of the ports of call, there was a psychic setup where the cruise docked and she gave him a reading and he asked, when will I die? And she told him, when you're 72. And it was at 72 that he came in for a reading with me, scared to death, literally, that if my cards also revealed 72 as the age of his inevitable passing, that that meant this was his last year on earth. So he, the reason he was so persistent that he get the reading was that he believed fully in psychic powers and psychic experience. And he thought up until meeting me, that what that reader told him would come true, that he would die that year. And for all I know, this man could still be alive. I know the last time I was in Vancouver, about five years ago, I met the groundskeeper of that shopping district who told me he's still alive and he, he still says you added these years to his life. Now, the way I see it, just as a disclaimer, I do not believe that he would have died in his early 70s because some psychic in the Caribbean scamming on tourists. No offense to her, but bitch, who tells a man he's gonna die at 72? Like, that's, that's uncalled for. And she was wrong, so scam. But like, I do not believe that if he hadn't had a reading from me, he would have died at 72. Like, I'm not taking credit for his longevity. But what I do believe is that we can sometimes get sucked into a self-fulfilling prophecy. If somebody tells you, you are a failure, you're never going to amount to anything, you might as well just give up and play video games in your underwear all day. If you feel a lack of motivation and a lack of ambition, and you can't bring yourself to get dressed or do anything but play video games, it's because you've allowed that person's negative opinion and assessment of you to become a self-fulfilling prophecy. So in the realm of psychics and charlatans, this concept of self-fulfilling prophecy is very important to understand. It's like the mystical equivalent of a placebo effect because a reader tells you something and you believe it, you manifest it in your life. Now, this is a good thing if a reading reveals a positive outcome and suddenly you have this new zest for life and this newfound enthusiasm. So you get really motivated and start acting on your dreams. But it's a bad thing if a reader gives you a dire forecast and says, oh, doom is upon you and now you're, you're fucked unless you pay me a huge sum of money to cleanse you of these evil spirits. Like... You will never hear that kind of doom and gloom in any of my readings because I understand the power 
that comes through when somebody reads your spiritual energy for you, reads the cards for you, reads signs and symbols or interprets dreams. I, I feel a great responsibility when it comes to this kind of work. And that's why I'm giving you this little disclaimer. So if you ask a question and the answer is no, and I'm gonna demonstrate for you in just a moment how we come to those answers. If the answer is no, please don't feel that suddenly what you want as your reality is no longer possible. I will never just say yes or no. I will always read the message on the card to explain why and how to change it if you want to change it. I hope that makes sense for you. So when I read yes or no questions, and, and these questions have to be yes or no, that's how this stuff works. I'll explain further in just a moment. I always answer yes or no questions with the Osho Zen Tarot because this deck has cards that could be perceived as both positive or negative. Like if you're watching this and not just listening, when I was flipping over cards, you would have seen earlier, there's the lovers, you would have seen this card. How cool is that, that it came up twice in this reading? This card of conditioning, which could be seen as a more negative card. This lion all tied up, dressed up as a sheep, believing he's a sheep, living his life with sheeply limitation, not aware of his greater power because of social conditioning. So when a card like this comes up, that could be seen as negative. When a card like sharing comes up with this plate of plenty and this beautiful motherly figure welcoming you to her feast, that can be seen as a positive. Whereas oracle cards, like these two decks here, which you see in my Life Path Energies Revealed readings, show only really positive messages. So you can't really get a clear assessment of the practical stuff when it's only showing the, the mystical energies. And this deck here, I have committed myself to learn to become as proficient in as the Osho Zen. It's called the Visions of Gaia Tarot. So at some point in time, I may do yes, no readings with that deck also. But for now, I'm going to stick with the deck that I've read with professionally for God, I feel old for over a decade now. <laughs> so the way a yes or no question works is when a card is right side up, like this one, the answer is yes. When it's upside down, like that one, the answer is no. And the message on the card is the answer why. So for example, if I had just asked the question, Am I involved with the right projects right now? If this came up, the answer would be yes. If that came up, the answer would be no. The message of totality would be telling me, yes, I'm involved in the right projects because I'm a team player. We see these trapeze artists here. This one swinging towards her future represents the questioner. The person here represents the past, there represents the future, and it shows a beautiful group dynamic, a cohesive group energy, like, yeah, you've got the right team with you, they're supporting you in your forward mo movement, and those in your future are just ready to catch you and help you, like, yes, you are in the right projects. If this card came up as the answer no, the lovers reversed would show a neglecting of one's romantic life, feeling like a failure in romantic relationships and allowing that to color the influence on projects. And so it would show, for example, for a married person, a necessity to bring the marriage into a greater state of harmony so that there's less worry about that connection. For a single person, it would be saying, don't give up on romance. There is somebody you have to open your heart to receive that energy gift. For somebody in a new relationship, it can also say, don't lose yourself too much in that relationship. Like don't become a relationship chameleon, changing everything about yourself for the other person 
and avoiding progress on your individual projects. Like the person you're with fell in love with you, not the you that became a them pleaser trying to mold and conform into who you think they think you should be. Boy, that's a mouthful. I think you get it. So right side up means yes, upside down means no. The message on the card is the reason why. And when I'm doing readings in person or via Zoom or via my Wizio page where you can get this question and answer reading, um, you get three questions. I'll spend about 10 minutes per question. You can actually type me and let me know what your question is. So for example, if it's a really spiritual question, I might actually choose to use one of my more mystical spiritual oracle decks for it. If it's a worldly question, it'll be the Osho Zen. And if it's a worldly question, but with mystical undertones. I'm going to break out my new deck, The Visions of Gaia Tarot. But for, for sake of demonstration this time, I'm using Osho Zen. So the question that you ask, I recommend asking a question like, am I headed to success in wealth? Or am I working on the right project? Or is my romantic life going to change? You know what I mean? Like, make it whatever question you want. I don't need to know what it is. The cards will know, even if me as a person, I don't know. And we'll see how this happens. You know, I have had readings in the past, in my professional life, where my clients didn't want to voice the question out loud. For whatever reason, they felt embarrassed, it was a little personal, they didn't want to reveal too much private information, or maybe, let's be real, sometimes they were testing me. So they would think their question, and I would do a reading like this, and even then, it was remarkable how many times they said, wow, like, I can't believe how much sense this makes, even though you didn't even know my question. So I'm hoping it works on YouTube. This is a demonstration and also an experimentation. And so with that said, let's make three piles here. We've got, I'm gonna grab the nearest crystals, pile one, pile two, and pile three. So take a moment and decide which pile you feel calls to you the most, and we'll get into your reading. So I'm just going to make these clear. Pile one, pile two, and pile three. Breathe, meditate, think of your question. And whichever pile you feel has the answer to your question, let that be the pile you pick. You can find the timestamps in the video description below, and I will see you at your reading. Hello, everyone who chose pile one, and welcome to your reading. The gemstone that you selected for your pile is a lovely stone called Chrysocolla. And this mineral is especially known as a healer of the throat chakra, which is our center of communication, verbalization, vocalization, and musical expression. Chrysocolla is especially known as the stone for sound healers, for sacred sound. So listening to healing music, to music with a higher frequency energy, listening to guided meditation tracks, to world music, to music with a specific frequency or hertz designed for what you want to draw into your life would be highly recommended at this time. If you're drawn to Chrysocolla, it means this is an era of communication in your life. Heal that throat chakra, maybe do some humming, hum some mmm kind of tones. That really energizes your throat. And with all that said, I'm going to play the singing bowl and get into your reading. 
So playing the singing bowl, speaking of sacred sounds, purifies the space through that vibration. And as I do this, I'm setting the intention that whatever answer is revealed by the tarot cards today gives an accurate, useful, and beneficial answer to the question posed by all those who selected Pile 1. And on that note, I'm going to start shuffling the cards. As I shuffle the cards, I'd like you to think about your question. I'm going to deliberately mix up the orientation so some are right side up, some are upside down. <laughs> Otherwise, there's no way to get an accurate reading, right? Think about your question. I'm going to draw three cards to get a full fleshed answer. And we'll start now. So with the energies as they are in this moment, the answer to the question is no. But remember what I said in the beginning of the video, when the answer is revealed as no, what that actually means is this is an opportunity to change direction if the no doesn't suit you. Now, of course, if you ask something we're getting an all across no, 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 in all three cards is a good thing, then woohoo, congratulations, you're doing the right thing. If, however, you were hoping for a yes, these cards reveal how you can change the situation in order to manifest an outcome you more desire. The first card is the card of intensity. When the intensity card is reversed, it shows that although you have a goal, you're not actually flying towards the goal. You're more holding on to the possibility of the goal as something that you wish would happen for you rather than something you're actually putting in the work, the work towards manifesting. The conditioning card reversed. Interesting how this is one of the cards I gave in my description earlier of, of what the cards mean. The conditioning card really shows that you are holding yourself back for the sake of appeasing the group of people around you. Now, when the conditioning card is reversed, there's a very interesting energy here, which shows that you are at a breaking point. You no longer feel comfortable playing along with a role that others chose for you. This can represent everything from boredom at work and having the desire to venture out on your own, maybe to start a business and quit your day job. That's if this is like a career reading. If this has to do with family, with friends, or with relationships, what it's showing is that you feel like you can't express your true self and still be loved and valued and appreciated by the people in your life. It's like you used to be one way, but as you grow and as you transform and they stay the same, you suddenly feel like they will be threatened by you. Like if this lion lets out a roar, the sheep are going to scatter. The same way in your life right now, when this card is reversed, it's showing that what you're feeling is if you let your freak flag fly, like if you let out a roar and declare yourself to be who you are, if you start talking about your higher ambitions, the things you feel intense about, but that you're not letting yourself take action towards, you're going to lose the safety and the security of the group energy around you. You'll, you, you'll lose the safety of employment if you quit a day job. You will lose the safety net of people if you decide that you have to go out on your own and find a new group or find a new partner. What I'm feeling in your no answer is that this situation for you is stuck because you're so attached to reality as it is, that even though you're not happy with it, even though you want to change it, 
you're scared to take that first step because you do have a feeling of comfort. It's like, what I have now isn't good, but I don't want to throw it away for something that's only a possibility. And if you asked this question, thinking you were going to get a clear cut, straightforward answer, should I do this or not? And it's saying no, what you're getting instead is a complex overview of why it's not happening, not whether or not you should do it. In fact, what I'm feeling like is like you need to do something different. You need to shake things up in your life. You need to make a change, but you've been holding yourself back from doing it and also projecting the idea that it's other people around you who are not allowing you to grow. Finally, the sharing card reversed. Very interesting that this is another one of the cards that was used as a demo earlier. And you saw me shuffle this up, like that's no coincidence. And plus these two were not together earlier. Um, this card that shows this beautiful motherly figure holding a platter of fruit and a candle that represents illumination. And she's wearing these flowing robes that look almost like a tent or like blankets that you can snuggle into. When this card is reversed, it shows a disconnection from the physical mother or from the mother figure, like feeling as if you don't have the safety of a mother's arms to go into. It's kind of like you feel like you're on your own in the world. You have goals, but you don't know how to achieve them. You're stuck in a dead end position and there's no going home because you've left the nest. That's what I'm feeling here. And so when the answer is coming up as a no, and these are the specific cards, it's time to really ask yourself, if nothing in your life changes, if everything stays the same, are you okay with that? And if the answer is no, you're not okay with it, and you don't want these cards to be reversed, it's time to rectify them. Now, in the case of sharing, what that means is open your heart to the safety and the security that is always available to us sometimes in places where we are not looking. What I'm feeling is if, for example, if your parents told you, like, once you move out and start living your life, don't come crawling back. Like, if, if you feel like you can't go back, then it's time to be that mother figure in your own life. Give yourself some compassion. Congratulate yourself on getting as far in life as you've gotten so far and be proud of the ideas you've come up with, even if you haven't intensely taken action on them yet. This intensity card reversed doesn't mean you don't have intensity. It means you're not using your intensity. Like sometimes you need that inner Tony Robbins to yell at you and tell you, you can do it, but get off your butt. Like you can, you can succeed in life, but you have to work in order to succeed that doesn't mean it's going to be hard to achieve your goals. I don't believe in hard work. I believe in the more you enjoy the work you're doing, the more fluidly it's going to happen, the more beautifully it's going to feel, the more prosperity is going to come of it. And by nature of making those changes, the conditioning is going to rectify itself. You don't have to slaughter all the sheep around you as a lion. Like, dude, I'm a vegan. I don't believe in that shit anyway. So when I see the lion surrounded by sheep, what I feel needs to shift is that this lion needs to find his pride or her pride, needs to find a group of other lions to jump into where that roar isn't going to be seen as a negative thing or a frightening thing or something to stamp out of him. So if you want this to be a no, keep living as you're living. But if you wanted the answer to be a yes, bring the intensity into the projects you're doing. For example, if you're in a dead end job and at the end of the day, when you get home, you don't want to do anything because you've exhausted all your energy 
working for somebody else, working for some company, and you don't even care whether it's successful or not, as long as you get your paycheck, it's time to revitalize your energy. For whatever reason, I'm, I'm feeling that work vibe with these particular cards. It's time to prioritize. Like, think in terms of immediate gratification versus delayed gratification. Like, in the short term, what sounds like more fun? Like, sitting down, watching a movie on Netflix and gorging on chips? Or writing up a business proposal, starting a YouTube channel, developing a product, pitching an idea to an investor, like obviously our idea of a fun night would be the movie and the chips. But what action in the present moment is going to lead to the future outcome you want? And I'm sorry if this sounds preachy or whatever, but that's kind of what I do when I'm reading cards. The intensity card is all about working towards that delayed gratification instead of doing what's fun and what feels good right now doing what you know is going to lead to the future outcome you desire and for this card here the other message of course is sharing so sometimes this card comes up reversed when you've got great ideas and you are this figure and you're holding on to all of these beautiful gifts, but you're not sharing them with the world because you're conditioned. There's a whole other reading for this. And so start opening up to the people in your life and let them know what ideas you're sitting on and what plans you've been considering. And when you start sharing those ideas, you might draw in that group of lions so you can ditch the sheep. You know, it's fine for people who want to play by the rules and work for the company and work their way up a corporate ladder. I'm sorry to sound judgmental, but in for the purpose of this demonstration, we'll call them the sheep. But then there's the lion who doesn't want to be somebody else's employee, somebody else's, you know, whipping person who gets ordered around, who wants to be their own boss that lion has to break free. So I'm going to ask for one card to show, for those who wanted this to be a no, just by the way, at this point I should say, if you asked a, a confusing kind of a question like, am I doing the wrong thing in life? And the answer came up as no, then in your case, that's a good thing, right? The answer is actually, you are doing the right thing. You can flip the meanings of all of these. I hope that's making sense. But for those who asked a question and wanted it to be a yes, I want to see one card to symbolize how to flip the energy so that it will become a yes. Aloneness. The dream. And the Sorrow card. Interesting how now all three are right side up. So the dream over the intensity card shows for sure you have to hold on to the vision. Hold on to the ideal that you see in your mind's eye of what you can create that you haven't been working towards. The aloneness card over the conditioning card. I want to make it clear alone is not the same as lonely. So... It would be better for this lion to walk away from that group of sheep and be alone for a while where the lion can be the lion than to keep conforming. So what this card is showing is that there are individuals in your life who are holding you back. And now is a good time not to be lonely, but to be alone, to look into yourself and start deciding who you want to be for your sake, not for the sake of the collective or for the group, not to conform, but to truly be. And last but not least, the sorrow card here is showing that there is a period of grieving that it's healthy for you to go through. The character on this card is dressed in the robes of a monk, 
And typically we think of monks as being emotionless, beyond the heartstrings that tend to pull our human emotions into happiness when good things happen or sadness when a loss comes to pass. But in actuality, emotions are a healthy expression of our human experience. And if we repress them, we tend to become zombified. If you don't allow yourself to experience the sadness when something sad happens, if you put on a forced fake smile and tell everybody, I'm fine, I'm okay, I'm okay, and you neglect allowing yourself to just cry it out and to just let it heal and to let it hurt when it needs to hurt, you never actually recover from it. And what I'm feeling is this won't resonate with everybody. This is a very specific message for maybe just one person watching this video. But if you have suffered the loss of a loved one or the loss of a job or a breakup, if somebody broke your heart and you've been forcing yourself to pretend that you're okay and that everything's fine and that it doesn't hurt, but deep down inside, that pain is just ripping at you. It's important to acknowledge that that pain is there and allow it to be there, to cry it out and to grieve it. And I really feel that there is the end of a romantic relationship, probably for more than one of you, because the aloneness card and the sorrow card coming up together show that that energy is definitely something affecting, I would say this collective, like everyone who chose group one. Very interesting also that the stone associated with the cards that you chose is the stone of Chrysocolla, which is all about communication and self-expression. And part of the issue is overcoming that conditioning, dropping the sheep's garb and letting your lion self be that king or that queen of the jungle that you are. So yeah, it's it's not an altogether woohoo, life is great kind of a reading, but these cards are letting you know, especially because after I reshuffled and three came up right side up, you can shift this energy from a no into a yes if you so choose to. And the way to do that is to hold your dreams, hold your visions, work with intensity towards actualizing them. Allow yourself to be alone. Don't feel the need to be pressured by anybody else into being something that you're not. And grieve your losses, go through that sorrow. Especially if you had a romantic question and this answer came up as no. I should have explained this earlier. When you ask a question about another person as opposed to about yourself, for example, does he love me or does she love me or will this relationship be a success? The answer is not as much up to you. Like it's not as much up to you to change the no into a yes as if you're asking a question based on your self effort, right? Because two people are involved. It's your free will and the other person's free will. So if your question was a romantic question we can also see these three cards as the stages of letting go. We see this couple, the girl is fantasizing, this is her dream to be swept away by that knight in shining armor, and yet she's alone. One thing that needs to be done in order to move on to a healthy, successful relationship is to go through the sorrow, to go through the grief of the loss of this dream. What I'm feeling is there's something better ahead. Like if you hold on to something that's come to an end and you're not ready to give it up, that is holding you back. That's giving you the three reversed cards that show the lack of self-drive, the lack of self-expression, the lack of feeling nurtured and taken care of. And so allowing these emotions to play out will be the best thing as far as dealing with the loss, moving forward, and recreating the best future. 
So before I move on to the question from pile two, this was tough pile one. I'm, I'm here for you. Like, I don't know how private your question was, but if you want, you know, a few personal words from me, leave a comment under this video and you know, if, if you want, you can let me know what your question was and if I have a different kind of interpretation based on that. Or you can get like a, a full private reading um, from me where it's just you and me, nobody else has to know through Wizio. The link to that is in the description as well as a 10% off coupon provided by Wizio um, as the summer discount, which is pretty cool. Um, but before I move on to pile two, for those of you who are ending up here who aren't going to comment or book a private reading, I'm asking for one card from the Crystal Ally cards. I'm asking what earth energy or crystal talisman or crystal ally can be most beneficial to those who chose pile one right now. And the energy is Blue Lace Agate, another throat healing card, throat chakra gem. And the message with Blue Lace Agate is innocence. So you may be feeling like you've lost some of your innocence as a result of the situation that you're going through right now. And I love this card so much. I'm a mermaid person. Uh, not not like I'm a crazy person who believes I'm a mermaid, <laughs> like the Eliza Schlesinger stand-up. If you've seen that, it's pretty, it's pretty hilarious. Go watch that if you need to lighten the mood after this. Um, but I'm a mermaid person in the sense that I love the whimsy of mermaids. I love the ocean. This mermaid here is holding a piece of blue lace agate, and she has a look on her face like something has changed in her life. She's not quite sure who she is or what to think anymore, but the message of innocence means that she's not become jaded or cynical. She's still ready to embrace whatever reality has to offer. The playful arc of her tail, the billowy nature of her hair, it's all showing like that eagerness to see what more life has. And it's a water element card. You can tell by the border here, these beachy waves. When a water element card comes up, it's a reminder to go with the flow, surrender into the currents, let the tides carry you where they will. And so when there's an ebb and flow in life, if we're resisting that change and if we're fighting that change, it's going to be really difficult because water is persistent. Like if you steadily drop little bits of water onto a piece of clay, the water is going to sculpt that clay for you. And so when a water element card comes up, part of the message is to allow that water energy to flow, relax into it, float a little bit, and also allow water to heal you. I would highly recommend after watching this video, maybe tonight before you go to bed, soak in a healing bath, like put some sweet smelling bath salts if you have them in the water. If you don't have them, you don't need to put anything and you can even put a tea bag. Here's a life hack for you. Put your favorite tea bag into your bath water and you've just created your very own infusion to soak in but really take a healing bath or take a long shower, treat yourself to that water energy and set the intention to cleanse away the conditioning, the, the repression of emotions, the feeling that you have to conform and set the intention that at the end of the bath, you'll have the intensity to pursue your goals full swing once again and I'm sure that that water is going to revitalize you. And if you're curious about what kind of crystal or what kind of gemstone you can carry, wear, or hold on to and meditate with at this time, blue lace agate would be a great one. 
It is a throat chakra crystal, similarly to Chrysocolla, which was the stone for this reading. So that's just confirming for us that this really is a time for you to own your voice, own your expressions, get ready to start vocalizing and speaking your truth because you deserve to and never lose your innocence. Hold on to that because the future is always an unknown and how it's going to be in your life is dependent on the choices you make and the decisions you make in the now. So I'm wishing you nothing but success from here on, nothing but the best of what life has to offer you. I hope this was helpful. I hope it wasn't too hard to hear some of the messages on these cards. I am here for you 100% if you'd like help with anything or more clarity about any of this. As a disclaimer, once I've uploaded another video after this video, so if you're seeing this farther into the future, I may not see your comments because I typically look at the comments only on my newest upload, like my most recently uploaded video but I will be available for private sessions on Wizio. So again, the link to that is in the description. Much love to you, much healing vibes, and hope for your best future. Bye for now. Hello, and welcome to your question and answer reading, those who chose pile two. I'm going to play the singing bowl to cleanse the energy in this space, and then I will get into your reading. While I play the singing bowl, think of one question. It should pertain to something in your life that you have, basically that affects mainly you, um, and it should have a yes or no kind of an answer. Like, I'm not gonna give you any examples. I don't want to condition it. I think you get the point. You're a smart person. You navigated YouTube. You got here. So think of your question and I'll play the singing bowl to purify the energy in this space, to clear away the energy from pile one, and to set the tone for those who have a question and selected the answer from pile two. Thank you, existence, for allowing the answer to come through that serves the highest good for those who chose pile two. Let the answer come through in a way that is beneficial and from the love and light vibration. And on that note, the gemstone that you selected with your pile is this beautiful, magical Labradorite. So when you're drawn to Labradorite, it means that the energy you're working with is the energy of magic. Like this is a time in your life when your manifestations are coming into reality. So dreams, visions, spiritual activities, all of that good stuff is given a little bit of an added boost. I've shuffled the cards well. I'm going to turn on my little seashell lamp. We'll have some tarot by lamplight. That barely makes a difference, but the answer for pile one took a little longer than I anticipated, so it got dark in the meantime. I'm shuffling the cards. I'm keeping my eyes closed so that I can't tell whether the card on top is right side up or upside down. I don't want any bias here, even from myself. And we will go. So we have a no, a yes, and a yes. When two out of the three cards are showing a yes, it shows that the answer to your question is mostly yes. So you are mostly doing exactly what's meant to be done in order to get the yes answer. I'll start with the two yes cards and then we'll go into the no card for kind of what can shift in order to get the most ideal outcome. 
But the two yes cards here are so beautiful. One is called understanding and the other is called innocence. The understanding card is one of my absolute favorites. The, the way I read this symbolically, you see the doves in the background flying around in the sky, enjoying their freedom. And there's this dove here perceived to be in a cage. And the way, the reason I say perceived to be in a cage is that if you look at these bars, the further into the darkness they go, the more solid they appear. But as the eye moves up, they vanish, they disappear. So the message on the understanding card is that you have gone through a cycle in your life of feeling caged in and held back, like there's nothing you can do, you're a victim of circumstance. But at this moment in time, at the time of this reading, when you're asking this question, you are starting to recognize your powerfulness. You're starting to see that the world isn't a solid obstacle trapping you in, like an insurmountable, unbreachable fortress. The world becomes what you perceive it to be. If you see the world as like a hostile, unwelcoming place that you can't succeed in, you go into this darkness and those bars are solid. You can't get what you want. But as you understand that you are a master manifester and what you believe does become your reality, which I'm sorry, but I believe that to be 100% true. Sorry, not sorry. Like sorry to those hardcore skeptics who say manifestation is impossible. I've experienced it. I believe it's possible. And it looks like so do you, those who chose pile two. Accidental rhyme, but let's go with it. You are this dove. And when this card is right side up, it shows you are moving into a powerful time of manifestation. I mean, what was I just saying about Labradorite? You are at a magical time in your life and you're starting to break through your own past limitations. I'm thinking of something I saw recently on YouTube. There's a channel that popped up. I forget what video popped up, but YouTube algorithms can be kind of crazy sometimes because I was looking at some vegan recipe videos, getting some summer recipe ideas, and suddenly the YouTube algorithm recommended me a video by a creator called Obese to Beast. And I was intrigued just by the name of the channel. So I clicked on it and he shared a bit about his story that he grew up as, in his words, as the fat kid and always believed that it was just his genetic bad luck that he was obese and that he wasn't fit like the kids that he hung out with and that he didn't have the ideal body type that he wanted. And then one day he had this moment of clarity, this aha wake up call where he realized, well, shit, like what if the reason my body is like this is because I drink tons of sugary pop? What if it's because I eat a ton of junk food? What if I start cutting this out and exercising more and eating more healthfully. And when he started making those changes, those solid bars of limitation of poor me, I'm stuck being one way, started to melt away. And he realized, whoa, if I just start living like I am what I want to be, living like I am a bodybuilder or a fit person or like, change this analogy to suit you if you don't like the, the weight analogy, if that's triggering, I'm sorry, this is just what's coming to me. But when he realized that when he started taking the actions to being what he wanted to be, he was that. And so when this card comes up, it's showing that whatever you previously felt was your circumstance, you're starting to realize changes with your state of being. So I'm going to give a Bashar quote at this point, one of my absolute favorite quotes of all time, which is that your circumstances don't matter, only your state of being matters. 
your weight doesn't matter. Your decision for what actions to take and which food to eat matters. Like what you are now doesn't matter, as in materialize your future outcome. Your state of being, the choices you make and the actions you take matter. Materialize as your ideal future outcome. So this example can be anything. It doesn't have to be about the body. It can be about finances. If you feel like you've been limited and stuck being poor because you were raised poor, when you suddenly realize that you can manifest wealth by pursuing your ideas and putting your effort and your energy and your fun into them, and they create a new reality, you're there. You've got Lakshmi's blessings. You're in that flow of abundance. If it's about feeling shy, but wanting to share more vocally, when you realize that you don't have to be the quiet, shy person, that as soon as you start talking, you break that shyness pattern and suddenly you're a social butterfly, you become it. But this understanding card right side up shows that part of the reason the answer is yes, is that you are at a powerful turning point in your life where you are realizing the power of your own beliefs to change what you previously believed was reality. You are changing your life. And the innocence card, whoops, my ring made that ding. Another accidental rhyme. Maybe you're poets, group two, and I'm channeling your poetic energy here. But the Innocence card is one of my favorite, favorite cards. It shows this Buddha-like character sitting under a flowering tree as wise as he is, as knowledgeable as he is, as much as he does in his human powerfulness. He is making friends with that adorable little cricket. That little bug landed on his hand and he is as thrilled to see that bug as if he's seen a long lost friend. When this card comes up right side up as part of a yes answer, the message is treating every moment with the eyes of a child as if it's your first time ever experiencing it. The innocence card shows you are embarking on something new. And even if you have experience, you're not allowing the successes or the failures of the past to condition your possibility for the future because this new energy you're moving into, it's crazy. As I said new energy, I glanced at the timestamp. We're at 11.11, so there you go. Another good um, confirmation that you're on the right track, those who picked pile two. You're not allowing the success or the failure of the past to limit your future because you are kind of in an uncharted territory, like you're embarking on something totally new. The only reversed card here is the card of celebration. And in this card, we see these three graces, these three inspirations, these three lovely ladies dancing for joy in the rain. I just love this card. The energy is so beautiful. Some people will say rain, rain, go away, come again another day, and other people will kick off their shoes and dance in the puddles and just enjoy whatever's happening for what it is. So when this card is reversed, what it shows is that despite your powerful manifestation capacities, despite your childlike innocence as you go into something new, there's a last lingering self skepticism that says, well, it's raining, or well, the reality still isn't what I want it to be. So even though I believe I can shift it, it's not time to celebrate yet. First, I'm going to do the hard work. First, I'm going to make sure it really happens. I'm excited. I'm going to go into it, but I'm not going to really jump for joy until I have the result. And so the one shift I would suggest making to get this a straight up all across positive answer is don't wait for success to celebrate. Celebrate as you build up towards your success. So what that means in practical terms is 
the moment you decide to shift your energy into the belief that what you want is possible and that you can have it, celebrate that milestone. Jump up and down, dance in the rain, even if the outer world hasn't yet changed to accommodate your new belief, celebrate that new belief. Even if you don't yet have the fruits of your labors, celebrate planting those seeds celebrate watering the seeds, celebrate tending to the garden. You don't have to wait until it's come to fruition. You don't have to wait until harvest time to celebrate the rewards you're reaping. Part of what's going to fuel your success is getting away from this self-deprecating energy that says, I don't want to jinx it by getting excited too early or like, knock on wood, I'm not going to tell anybody I'm doing this new exciting thing until it's successful because, God forbid, I tell them I'm going to do something great and then what if I fail? That's the kind of energy that holds us back. When you confidently share your, your new ventures with others, when you start celebrating the fact that you're going to do it, even if it's not done yet, you bring even more accountability onto yourself where now you have to do it. This is something, for example, the way I do this in my life, I had procrastinated starting to do tarot readings again for a couple of years after I left a cult because I had kind of lost faith in my abilities, in my intuitions. And when I decided one day thanks to a conversation with a good friend of mine who helped me kind of realize the mistakes I had made weren't mistakes. They were necessary steps on the path. And so they don't mean I have to doubt my intuition. They just mean I have to shift my focus about why those perceived negative things happened and what I learned from them. When I decided, okay, you know what? That makes sense. I'm going to start reading tarot cards again. Instead of just secretly holding on to it, I told my mom, hey, guess what? I'm going to start reading tarot cards again because I know she's going to nag at me until I'm doing it. And in that way, you know, sharing it with somebody else means now I have to do it. The accountability is out there. Posting a status update on some social media saying I've made a decision. I'm going to start doing this new thing. I'm really excited wish me luck or celebrate with me, that might feel like a scary thing to do until you actually have the goal achieved. But in actuality, it helps you achieve it. It helps you manifest it. The other thing about the celebration card is that there's a group of friends here. So when this is reversed, it would be really great for you to share what you want to manifest with the people in your life whose opinions you value. Like it doesn't mean tell your frenemies what you want to do so that they can talk you down and hope for you to fail. Like it means tell the people who have your back, like tell your ride or dies, tell the people who you really believe will support you. Tell those friends, tell the friends who will dance with you barefoot in the rain because that's going to help fuel and energize this project. Two cards out of three is a very, it's a strong, it's, it's not a solid yes, but it's a strong yes. It's showing that you are close to a solid yes. And the one thing that's going to shift that is to drop the fear of talking about what you're doing. Drop the fear of bringing other people into it. Drop the fear of expressing it and that's going to bring you the full yes. Before I move on to those who chose group three, I'm going to, as a surprise bonus, pull one card from the Crystal Ally cards. And so I'm asking for pile three, which earth energy or gemstone would make the best talisman or the best energy to carry while manifesting this? We have a jumper. The card that flew out is Diamond Transcendence. Talk about manifesting and transforming to a new energy. The Transcendence card shows 
the human individual realizing she has wings or he has wings or they have wings, realizing the divine self has existed all along. And so when diamond is your talisman, dude, we can't all afford to just hop over to Christie's or wherever and buy ourselves a fancy cut round brilliant. Like, no. What you can do is, if you have a diamond already, start wearing it, start carrying it around with you as a symbol of this transcendence you're going through, of this beautiful, positive life transformation you're going to. If you don't, you can take a screenshot of this. Actually, no, this isn't the best picture. Do a Google image search for like a beautiful diamond and take a screenshot of your favorite and just keep it in your phone or in your computer as a talisman. Gemstones work in such a way you don't need to own the physical stone or spend money on something to get the vibration. You can connect with that crystal ally even through a picture. But let that diamond be a symbol of what you're going through. What makes a diamond a diamond is the pressure put on that coal. And similarly, this card coming up shows that you have gone through pressure in your life, but you are coming through that shining. So enjoy. You've earned this. You've earned for these solid bars to give way so you can start flying into your potential. You have had experiences that would have left other people angry, jaded, closed off, but you have held your innocence realize that this transcendence is happening and don't feel like you have to wait to celebrate. Very positive reading, those who chose pile two. I would love to hear about what you actually asked and how this reading connects with that or doesn't, you know, positive or negative. I'm always open to feedback. So please feel free to leave a comment below. If you'd like to expand on this or ask other questions or get my personal response to your question when I know what your question is, you're welcome to book a reading with me through Wizio. I have all kinds of different readings. The Q&A is one version. And in the Wizio version of the question and answer reading, you can ask me any three questions and I will give you a full flushed answer to all three of them, just like this using the Osho Zen only it's a little more personal because it will be specific to your situation. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this was enjoyable. Much love to you, Pile 2, and I will see you next time. Bye. Hello and welcome to your reading, Those Who Chose Pile 3. Don't adjust your monitors. It is hella dark in here right now. Pardon my talking like a 90s valley girl, but do people still say hella? I don't know. It got super dark because I went on for much longer than I had initially planned to in the intro and in my answer to pile one. So here we have tarot by lamplight. It's a little darker, but don't worry. The energy is still flowing and we're still going to get your answer. Before I look at your cards, the crystal that you selected with pile two, it looks a little dark right now because that's how it is, but this is a gorgeous little Moldavite cave. Moldavite is the starborn stone of transformation. It's a powerful spiritual energy. And if that's the energy you're drawn to, then the answer to your question has a lot to do with a major change, a major transformation, and especially a purification, like letting go of what's no longer serving you so that the best can come through. But I'm going to play some singing bowl to cleanse the room of the energies that came through in the answer to pile two. As I play the singing bowl, think of your question call on your guides, call on your angels, call on existence, on God, on gods and goddesses, the higher energies you believe in most, Arcturians, Pleiadians, those in the love and light vibration. I'm looking at Ganesha as I say that, that's cool. Meaning um, 
not that I'm having a vision, but that there's a Ganesha Murti on my table and my eye just landed on him, so I feel he's here to help with this reading. Let whatever messages come through, come through to answer the question for those who chose pile three in a way that is most useful and beneficial. Wow, I love how the scene will actually tapered out that time as it was playing it. That's new. It's interesting how things are always different for every reading. Like no matter how many times I do this, it always comes out a little bit differently. We've all got these different energies. So I'm going to shuffle these cards well. I'm going to mix them up so that different cards are right side up and upside down compared to the other readings. We always want it to be new energy, newly shuffled deck. And I'm going to close my eyes. That way I won't have the bias of knowing which cards are right side up or upside down when I choose them. And we'll start with your answer now. We have a yes, a yes, and a no. So you have a mostly yes here. There's just one energy that needs to shift a little bit in order to give you a straight up yes. We'll start with the two yeses. The first is called Beyond Illusion. In this card, you are represented by the butterfly. Talk about a Moldavite transformation. When the caterpillar goes into the chrysalis, for all it knows, it's wrapping itself up in a tomb. Like that is the end of the caterpillar as the caterpillar knows life to be. But when the butterfly emerges from that chrysalis, life is just beginning. When the Beyond Illusion card comes up in your reading, it's showing that you have gone through an ending to something where you didn't even know what life was going to be when that form of your life ended. It's like your identity was wrapped up in something that turned out to be an illusion. And now that you're beyond that, it's time to completely recreate yourself. In this card, the physical eyes are closed, but the third eye is wide open. And what that means is you might not know yet what this question is going to lead into. Obviously, you wouldn't ask it as a question if you already knew. It's like your brain doesn't know yet, but your intuition knows. You aren't seeing yet what the result is going to be, but your third eye already perceived it was going to be a yes, even before I shuffled the cards. You are no longer held back by the illusions of what other people tell you reality is in a limited way. You're beyond that illusion. You are seeing life for what you make it to be, and your third eye is guiding you to that success. What better card can we get in a question and answer reading than success right side up? You are represented by this character here getting like a ticker tape parade, the streamers, the confetti are flowing. That shows the entire existence is celebrating the achievement that you're realizing. You're riding this tiger, which represents harnessing the power from our animal allies, strutting across the earth like you own it, because you do. This world is yours. Everyone who chose pile three, like the success is yours for the taking. The only thing that needs to shift is that you still hold on to some wounds from childhood where you felt like the outsider. It's weird, like this card doesn't necessarily represent childhood, even though there's a kid in the picture. But what existence is telling me, like the message I'm getting when I look at it, is that in the past, you have felt like you're not allowed to have what you want, that there's a locked gate stopping you from being who you want to be. Now this card here shows that your caterpillar self has already become your butterfly self. It's like you've already broken through that gate, but somewhere you're still holding on to that feeling of only being a caterpillar and wanting to be a butterfly. 
And so when you get two yeses and a no, where I really want to focus the attention is how to shift that no into a yes. So do a little work to look into yourself. Work is such a bad word. It makes it sound like it's going to be difficult. I'm going to change my vocabulary in this, change the way I verbalize that and say, do a little play with yourself. Look into who you are and see where you feel like you've come up against a wall in being who you want to be and expressing your identity and realizing the success in the achievements that you seek to achieve. See where you have felt like an outsider in the past and shift your perception about that. See it through your third eye instead of through the physical eyes. You can even visualize for those of you who can visualize, and I say that because some of us out here have aphantasia, look it up if you don't know what that means, but where we, we don't visually see pictures in our head when we try to picture them. Okay, I'm not going to go on a rant, just if you're able to visualize, you can close your eyes, not right now, but after this reading, close your eyes and picture yourself where this child is standing in front of a locked gate. And imagine that what you want is on the other side of that gate. What you want in life, what you want to achieve, what you want to be, it's over there and you're here. And in that visualization, see yourself grow from you as a child into you as you are now. Reach into your pocket, pull out the key, unlock this lock pull down the chain, swing the gate open, and walk through. It's already there in the cards that you'll have success. If you do that little visualization, that will powerfully transform this into an all yes reading. It sounds really simple, and it is. Sometimes our obstacles in life are perceived. And by nature of the fact that you are beyond illusion and that the success is there for you, the only obstacle now is this feeling like, who am I to be that awesome thing I want to be? Who am I to start a business? I don't have what it takes to be an entrepreneur. Or who am I to start talking to that person I want to talk to? They probably don't want to hear from somebody like me. Who am I to go on stage and share my truth? I'm boring. I have nothing to say. Like, as examples, maybe one of those relates to one of you hearing this, but the outsider card really represents that energy of feeling like you don't have the right to share who you are and what you are because people aren't interested. The outsider, it's like the, the black sheep or the one who is shunned, the one who doesn't fit in. But when this card comes up reversed, it's showing you actually are meant to be an insider. You have something to contribute. So what I'm feeling is that you're the type of person who has great ideas, powerful innovations. You can be a game changer but when you're, for example, confronted with a board, if that board is making a decision and you have something you want to say that can sway the decision, you know you're right, but you question yourself with that, who am I to say this? They're experts, I'm new here. What if my input won't be valued so you stay quiet? It's like that tendency to censor yourself and hold yourself back is the only thing standing between you and a complete yes answer here. So visualizing little kid you in front of this gate, speeding things up a little bit, putting it in extreme ultra fast forward, seeing that little kid you become present day you with the key to that lock, opening, dropping that chain, opening that gate and just not even walking through, but fucking strut your stuff, like strut through that gate as the successful, proud, high achiever you are. And that will be how you rectify the outsider card and make sure that you get 
the success that you're going for. The transformation has already happened. You're already seeing reality from a higher perspective. You already know that you've got a winning idea. Now just let go of the fear of sharing that or the fear of becoming it. Let go of that fear of success. Break down that last gate and it's yours. So I'm going to pull one card as today's bonus from the Crystal Ally deck and just ask what earth energy or crystal ally would make the ultimate talisman for those who chose pile three during this time of becoming life's ultimate insider, dropping the outsider energy beyond illusion with total success? Wow. And the card is Convergence with the Stone Shiastolite. What we see here is a beautiful sacred geometrical spider web coming to that convergence point where these three aspects of the crystal Shiastolite come together. This is a storm energy card which has a very powerful spiritual quality to it and what convergence means is when all the right energies come together harmoniously they create something new like if you take multiple different tones and combine them together the sound frequency they make is something more than just the sum total of its parts when this card comes up as your crystal ally for this moment is a good talisman you can carry a piece of chastolite with you. You can carry this crystal with you if you choose to as a talisman. I wouldn't recommend carrying a spider web with you as a talisman, but you could cut a little paper snowflake or something and carry it as a symbol of this. But just understand that all the different streams of life that you've lived, all the different aspects of your identity that you've experienced till now, have made you into who you are now, and you are more than the sum total of all your past experiences. You really are here to do something big, Pile 3. Like, I'm curious to know, because I'm a nosy freaking person, and now I want to know what these messages mean to those of you who are receiving them. I would love to know what question you asked, because the energy I'm sensing from this is a very powerful one. You've gone through a lot and you're about to do something that I feel is really, really good. So the group energy is another thing. Like if we see all these different streams as different aspects of society, different groups of people, I feel that you can be a very powerful figure as far as bringing understanding and bringing peace among previously discordant groups. You know, when people fight, you make a great bridge to get them back together and help them see eye to eye. It's a little bonus part of your reading here is that you're a great peacemaker. Part of that, the feeling of the outsider is starting to make sense. When other people are fighting and you're constantly having to bring harmony and make peace between them, it does feel like you're not part of the action. You know, when there's always a situation going on where this person thinks this and this person thinks that, and you can see both perspectives because you're beyond illusion and you've got your third eye, not your physical eyes looking at it. Part of you feels like you're always the one called on to fix other people's problems, but you're not in on the action. You're just the advisor. And so letting go of that feeling, letting go of this feeling that you're not part of it and understanding that the part you play is a higher role. You're no less part of the action. In fact, you are the determining factor for the successful, peaceful resolution of the action. You're not an outsider at all. You're the insider of insiders. It's like you're in on both sides of that fence. Here's a whole other perspective I have never before had about this card coming through just for you who chose pile three. What you want is on the other side of that gate, but what you have is on this side of that gate and once you unlock the chain and blow it open, you've got both. 
it's not just about moving over there and the grass being greener over there. It's also about understanding that what you have over here is equally great. So there's a whole new perspective on that card. Thank you, those who chose pile three for helping me come to that higher understanding. I've never had that come through in a reading before, but I feel like that's something that will resonate with the situation you're in. And I hope this was helpful. I, I feel obviously after seeing this card that you're headed towards success and I already feel your energy has shifted. How strange is this? We go beyond time and space in these kinds of readings where it no longer feels like you're holding on to that outsider. It's like just by thinking about doing a visualization where you see yourself unlock this and move through, you've already done it. Good for you, Pile Through. You are a powerful manifester. You've got that success. If you'd like more clarity about this, feel free to hit me up in Wizio for a reading. You can ask three questions. I'll answer all three the way I answered this one now, only it'll be a bit more specific and a lot more individualized because it will be just for you. And when I know what the question is, I can kind of filter through the messages more precisely so that it's specific to your situation and not just to all the random questions asked by all the people who chose the same pile. So if you're curious about that, the link will be in the video description, along with a coupon code to get 10% off. That's a gift from the Wizio people as their summer sale. It's not just for me, it's for all the creators on Wizio. I think they're all getting a 10% summer coupon. So yeah, that that is your reading. Good for you. Congrats. Congratulations, you're doing well. You are, I don't like that modern expression. How old do I sound? I sound like a grandma. I don't like how kids these days say you're killing it because killing is a negative thing. Like I, I don't like that expression. Call me an old lady, I don't even care. I wanna think of something to say instead of you're killing it. But you are, you are birthing it man that's too much of a mother feminine energy you are you're doing it let's go standard sounds too generic but you know what i mean you are doing this you you've got this that's what i'll say instead of you're killing it you've got this you are living a successful life i see good things if you continue on the trajectory you're on now success is there let go of that outsider energy. You're already letting it go because you are this powerful beyond illusion manifester. That convergence is happening in you. I'm hearing harmonic convergence. You are that harmonic convergence in your life right now. Your energies are now taking you to a higher level and I'm very happy for you. So thank you for sharing this reading experience with me. Much love to you. I'll see you in the next video, if not in the comments or if not in your private reading. Bye for now.